Hello, Bear Valley families, Miss Sarah here. We wanna welcome back our in-person scholars and make sure you have all the information you need to safely return to the building. We wanted to reiterate that we are one community, regardless of if you are an in-person learner or a virtual learner, and safety is our number one priority. To reiterate our priorities for the 2021 school year is safety, it is at the forefront of everything we have been doing and all the plans we have been making. Academic and social and emotional programming and equity. The purpose of this slide deck and this video is to ensure that our families are feeling well informed to the various plans and procedures that we have put in place. All decisions have been made to ensure a safe and welcoming return to the building for our in-person learners. We wanted to let you know during morning learning community time on Wednesday the 14th, all scholars who are set to return to the building will participate in an hour long live virtual orientation to ensure that they are ready to maneuver all of the new policies and procedures. This slide deck and presentation will be an introduction to much of the content that scholars will receive on Wednesday the 14th. We will be sure to share that orientation video and slide deck so that the families can review over the upcoming fall break. And as always, please do not hesitate to call the front office at 720-423-9600 with any questions or concerns. Before we dive into everything, we wanted to call out some celebrations. Uh, Bear Valley, in addition to our neighbors, Sabin Elementary School and JFK High School, have been named a DPS Whole Child Distinguished School for the 1920 school year. This is a huge accomplishment, as out of the total 207 schools in all of DPS, there were only 10 schools selected, three of which are in our very own Southwest Denver. At the end of last year, Bear Valley's English Language Development Scholars saw the largest student growth percentile in all of Southwest Denver, we are so Yeti proud. And in the slide deck, you actually see Ms. Cloverdance, Ms. Cloverdance, Ms. Geyer, Ms. Williams, all part of this huge growth that we are seeing with our ELD learners. And finally, it's official. After a very th long three-year application process, we have accomplished accreditation and we are officially an international baccalaureate school. All right, guys, the first week back in building, we wanted to make sure that you had your calendars marked for all these various dates. Fall break will be coming up here shortly. Friday the 16th, Monday the 19th, and Tuesday the 20th, there will be no school for scholars. On Wednesday the 21st, all scholars will return to learning. This will be the first day for our sixth graders in the building that are in-person learners. Our seventh and eighth graders will continue remote. On Thursday the 22nd, our sixth graders will return to the building and our seventh graders will join them for their first day. Again, our eighth graders will continue to be remote. And then finally, on Friday the 23rd, we will finally be one community yet again, as all of our in-person learning learners will be in the building with our eighth graders joining us. Scholars will be required to complete a health screening at home prior to leaving for school. We just really wanna make sure that every uh, Yeti is ready to learn and ready to enter the building. So we are suggesting that you utilize the daily screening process that DPS is offering, which is called Student Safe Access. On the slide deck on our website, as well as some additional communication we'll send down the road, we will provide these links so that you guys can start testing the system out. And then also there is another uh, resource here at the bottom of this slide that talks about some at-home symptom screening to help parents. Here are the health and safety guidelines that are given to schools by the Denver Health and the DTPHE in collaboration with the Denver Public Schools leadership team. So like I mentioned, health screenings will be completed prior to entering the building. Scholars will need to wear masks at all times. We'll go through that a little bit deeper in another slide. We will not be using water fountains. Scholars must bring their own water bottles. Scholars can be up into one cohort, which is just the same group of students in one room for up to 35 students. However, we're lucky enough to have a smaller um, size of classes. I think 28 is our largest size on that. Scholars will stay socially distant at six feet whenever possible. Up to four adults are able to rotate in those classrooms for in the, the in-person cohort classrooms to provide that live instruction. 
and cohorts will be assigned one entrance to both enter and exit the building every day. Chromebooks. So scholars will be required to bring in their charged DPS loaner Chromebook to school every day. Please ensure that your family has a backpack large enough to safely transport this back and forth and that you have your water bottles tight um, so that there is no leakage that happens in that uh, backpack. Please call the front office if you do not yet have a DPS loaner Chromebook. You are also able to bring in your own personal laptop if you so choose. Uh, Bear Valley just cannot be responsible for that. So if you would need a DPS loaner, just give us a call. In addition, we're requesting your assistance to help scholars start practicing good charging habits. So what they need to do is plug in their Chromebook every night in a secure location and make sure that lights on so that it is charging. When they wake up in the morning and log into their first class, please have them unplug that when they um, get onto their first Google Meet. And that will ensure us that that Chromebook can hold a charge for the whole day. And again, we have many supplies and backpacks at school if you are in need, so just give us a call. So the importance of masks and socially distance. When will my child have to wear a mask? So masks must be worn at all times when inside the build building. The exception will be if we are eating lunch in the classroom. Uh, scholars who have their masks off may, must be sitting and socially distant from their nearest classmate or teacher. And all students must face the same direction while masks are off and eating outdoors. Masks may be taken off when lunch is outside, but again, students must be sitting in their designated lunch area. We're going to discuss that in a next slide, in an upcoming slide, and stay socially distant. If a student stands around to move into a designated area, their mask must go back on. And staff will be wearing their masks at all times when supervising students outside. So just to reiterate, masks must be on at all times when in the building. This includes during class, in the hallways, and in the bathroom. We do appreciate your help maybe practicing that over the fall break. We know that they're a little uncomfortable if they are not used to wearing them. DPS has also provided many masks, both cloth and disposable, for families if you are in need. This is a cute little graphic that you could share with your, your kiddos to make sure that they are properly wearing that mask. I'm sure you guys have all seen the people that might have their nose out of their mask or it might be over their chin and not covering their mouth. We need to really make sure that their your nose and mouth is covered at all time and that you stay socially distant. Here's another graphic to kind of help give a visual of making sure that we are yes to these green checks and that we're not having our mask underneath our nose or our mouth. We feel very lucky that we're able to continue to keep the same bell schedule that the scholars are used to in addition to keeping the same teachers. This is not a luxury that a lot of DPS schools have been able to have and we want to really congratulate Ms. Leon and Ms. Williams for their uh, purposeful scheduling to ensure that our scholars have this consistency coming into quarter two. So as you can see, 8.30 is when we will start entering the building. Scholars can arrive as early as 8.15 as that is when adult supervision will start and get a grab and go breakfast. And they will be dismissed at 1.15 to finish up their asynchronous learning at home. So important times to know, again, the bell schedule is 8.30 to 1.15. Free breakfast outside from 8.15 to 8.25. And then the cohorts will be picked up after their health screening has been completed at 8.25. Student arrival. So this is going to look a little different than in years past. The drop-off zones, we will give you a visual on the map on the next slide. But in front of the building is going to be sixth grade. The basketball courts off West Columbia Place is going to be for seventh grade. And the side entrance slash bus entrance off West Bates Avenue will be for our eighth graders. Student breakfast, like I said, students arriving for breakfast will be able to pick it up at their grade level entrance. And they must be sitting in their designated breakfast zones sitting down while maintaining social distancing, and we will provide extra trash cans so all trash can be thrown away properly. Students will arrive and walk to their grade level cohort doors. Students will find their cohort sign and roster and line up in front of the Yeti footprints, which are on the lineup lines. Um, they're either blue or green, depending on if they are in the blue or green cohort. 
and that is where the temperature and symptom checks will occur. This again is going to go be taken into great detail on those orientation videos scholars will be watching on Wednesday the 14th. So here's that map I promised you. Here's that main entrance right here. So that's going to be our sixth graders. So anything here, they could be dropped off. Coming around here on the south side is uh, West Columbia Place by the basketball courts. That is where seventh grade can be dropped off. And then here on West Bates Avenue, this is where eighth grade should be dropped off as these are their two entrance and exit doors. So what happens if your child arrives late? Students arriving late will need to be welcomed at the main entrance doors, which is those sixth grade doors. A member of the admin team or a restorative culture will greet the student and administer a temperature and symptom check, and then they will be walked to class by that staff member. A quick note about the classroom learning space. Scholars will remain in the same classroom all day, less their outdoor lunch breaks. A total of four teachers will rotate in this classroom to provide that live instruction. Everyone will maintain that six foot distance. We will use hand sanitizer provided by the district often. Again, we recommend that the kids keep a personal water bottle at their desk. Keeping their personal supplies personal, they will not be using lockers this year, so make sure they have a backpack that can properly hold all of their items as we will not be sharing pencils or paper, etc. No more than two students will be able to be in the bathroom at a time. Only one student from a cohort may be dismissed at a time out of a classroom. There will be a bathroom system slash tracker that will be implemented within cohorts to ensure that we are staying compliant with those first two bullets. Each grade level will have their own designated bathroom. Extra staff will be in the hallways to help with this supervision. And again, water fountains will be off limits, so be sure your child packs a full water bottle each day. Breakfast and lunch will continue to be free to all DPS students until December 18th of 2020. All meals will be served in individual grab and go bags and containers. However, we are requesting, even though it's free currently, that all families fill out the required lunch application as soon as possible, as these lunch applications support direct state funding for our schools. Again, we're gonna keep our personal stacks personal, no sharing, unfortunately. We want to make sure, again, we have that water bottle every day as the water fountains will not be used. We want to ensure the kids are practicing good hygiene while eating, which means using hand sanitizer before and after, or washing their hands in the sink, and then putting their mask on after eating. We're really excited to be able to give the kids a mask lanyard, um, which is a great way for them to take off their mask, have it hang safely on their neck so that it doesn't have to sit on any surface or outside. Lunch and recess, we are just going to do our best to be outside each and every day for the lunch and recess. If there is inclement weather, this is what our plan will be. Um, lunch stations will be held in the grade level hallways, and then each cohort will be dismissed one at a time to go and walk and get their lunch, and then they will go back to their classrooms to eat lunch. However, like I said, we are just going to do our very best to be outside. We're hoping Colorado will provide us a very mild um, late fall slash early winter. Lunch stations will still be in those grade level hallways, but students will walk and grab their gun lunch and go outside to their designated grade level areas. And we're gonna show you that on the next slide. Students must stay in their designated lunch area. And when they're eating, they must sit if their mask is off. So here is another aerial view of our, um, of our campus. Sixth grade lunch, they're gonna utilize the tennis courts as well as the softball fields. Seventh grade is going to use that soccer field as well as the basketball uh, courts. And eighth grade is going to use this patch right here as well as this little patch as well. Um, we really wanted to be very purposeful in making sure that there was two different areas, both a hard surface and a soft surface, to give kids some choice. And then, of course, our multi-intensive center, they're going to have their lunch out of these doors right here. Dismissal. All scholars will be released at 1.15 to go home for their asynchronous learning. Students will be dismissed one cohort at a time for each grade level. Admin and RCT will be outside of the classroom to communicate how to dismiss. Teachers will then lead his or her scholars from classrooms to the designated exit doors, which is the same as morning entry. Our admins and restorative culture team will be assigned to a grade level hallway to make sure that we are helping with that dismissal. 
and scholars will need to be off campus immediately to ensure health and safety. As they get home, they will be able to participate in that asynchronous learning and be able to start getting their Chromebook charged up for the next day. So can my child bring their cell phone to school? Yes, but cell phones must be powered off as they enter in the building. And cell phones must remain in scholars' backpacks for the full school day. This includes recess and lunchtime. If a scholar is found using their phone during the day, they will be asked to relinquish it to an RCT member to safely store away. Should my child bring in earbuds or headphones? Yes, they can, but we will also have earbuds and headphones for students who do not want to bring in a pair from home. And Bear Valley is not responsible for any lost, broken earbuds, headphones, or cell phones. So we wanna make sure that that is very clear. Um, we understand that scholars have had access to their cell phones in a way that did not exist in previous school years. So we really wanna make sure that our families can help us with these rules to ensure that they are powering those down and keeping them safely in their backpacks throughout the day. So what happens if I have to pick up my child before 1.15 p.m.? We do kindly request that you avoid scheduling appointments during the school day. However, we understand that sometimes this is unavoidable and scholars will need to be picked up early. So office staff will alert the grade level administrator of students leaving early. A staff member will then go pick up that student from classroom and walk them to the main entrance. And then we will open the main entrance doors and um, have an electronic system of you checking that out. We will be looking for a state issued ID to ensure that you are the emergency contact in Infinite Campus, as well as providing some socially distanced spots for you to wait, um, kind of like a, a kid car side pickup, um, that you will be able to stay socially distanced if there happens to be more than one family picking up children at the same time. Transportation, as we've mentioned before, transportation this year is limited to students with legally entitled transportation rights, such as a student with documented disabilities or homeless students. However, we highly encourage you to call DPS Transportation directly to verify if your child is eligible at 720-423-4600. We also will be sending out some additional resources that RTD is providing uh, for the city buses. All right, dress code guys, thanks to the work of Miss Leon and her scholar-led Yeti Den Club, this year the 2021 dress code will look different and more relaxed than in previous years. All scholars were actually able to participate in a dress code survey last week uh, to ensure that we are honoring all voices as we adjust our policies. Final details will be sent out soon, but for now know that the decision will be scholar-led with a focus on respect and kindness. All right, guys, again, these links will be available on the slide decks. We wanna make sure that you're feeling um, supported as you're supporting your scholar at home. So these are some different resources to make sure that you can step-by-step -step through Schoology and make sure you know what's um, going on with your scholar's day-to-day -day academics. We wanna make sure that you guys know about the ways that we engage our families and community because obviously the goal of our engagement opportunities is to make sure that you are feeling informed and supported as we continue to serve you and your children. So some collaborative opportunities is our PAC or our Principal Advisory Committee. We meet every month to check in with Principal Leon and make important decisions to continue to strengthen our programming and opportunities for our scholars. Please check your emails or our website or Facebook every week. And please always reach out if you need help connecting to information. Following up on the communication, we send out voice, email, and text through our school messenger app. We also have the flyer app. I'm not sure how many of you have that on our phones, on your phones, but if you go to iTunes or Google app and look for flyer school app, um, you'll download that app. And then once you have the app installed, you will then search for Bear Valley. Um, various other schools do actually have this app as well. I believe Saban and JFK both have this as an active communication tool. And here are our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter accounts so that you guys can follow us on social media. All right, guys, that is all for today. We wanted to reiterate that we are priding ourselves on a school by the community for the community. So we are looking for any and all feedback to make sure that you guys are informed and that you don't have any more lingering questions.